Hello there Aquarius, welcome to your tarot reading. So first of all, when I was shuffling out the spread, I saw three images. You had a lot of images that came through and there were like three main ones that I wanted to talk about because I feel like their energies will resound. So first of all, I see this man, he's got like a little, you know, um, animal skin pouch of water, okay? It's depleted, so he's like going towards the, the, the bank of the river and filling up water into his little animal skin pouch and he's doing it in a very slow deliberate way as if you know there's no rush we're in a safe place we can kind of like uh, put our gears down get our tent up and you know we're gonna camp out possibly for the next few days so there is really no rush to his voyage down this um, to the water uh, watering hole and to fill up the pouch so he leans over and he just you know fills up the pouch then he um, the, screws the top of the pouch then he heads back to camp as he's heading back to camp he's looking at the wounded soldiers and all the people that might have succumbed to you know maladies and illnesses and ailments or whatever and they're in their tents with their family other people are taking care of them and he's just walking around taking stock of the environment okay so i feel like that's what you guys are pretty much doing for the rest of this month so that's the first image the second image i see these three men they're like um sheep herders they have uh, animals like sheep all around them and they're looking at the the sky and it's a it's like nighttime and there's a giant um, star uh, twinkling in the distance and one of the men says you know we need to follow that star so in oh uh, immediately i was thinking of like the three wise men and the astrologers and you know it's like the um the coming of something amazing so we need to reach that destination okay we need to look at the stars to kind of guide our way so that we're on our truthful path and we are also there's something amazing spectacular um, at the destination okay so I'm sensing this uh, this sense of like anxiousness and this sense of like excitement there is something out there okay there's something out there that fits the criteria there's we're being divinely guided towards a situation a person a place that is going to fit everything that we have been dreaming of and everything that we've been hoping for okay and then we have the third image and it's a little bit um, strange I see um, a wolf okay it's a, it's a wolf it has uh, broken into camp it's scoping around and it's got like a sheep's clothing uh, like a, a cloak that's made out of sheepskin or a sheep uh, fur or you know wool and it's it's draped over this wolf and this wolf has made infiltrated the camp it's uh, pretending to be something that it's not right so it's infiltrated the can looking around feeling very very smug okay so those are the three images and uh, let me just uh, explain a little bit about these images because what I'm sensing is um, there's a sense of calmness I feel in all three images that is washing over this entire reading and uh, I'm sensing as well for many of you the struggle is over okay the struggle to get where you are right now okay I feel like for many of you um, you have overcome many obstacles and against all odds have made it okay and I feel for many of you this is like your professional career uh, pretty much um, I also feel in relationships as well you're in a space where you're taking care of yourself as you should the energy needs to be directed at inner healing it needs to be directed at inner emotional and spiritual and you know whatever physical fight, uh, development first before we can reach that that state of Zen or that state of peace before we can accurately open ourselves up to what the universe wants to deliver to us the past few months have been like one thing after another things were just happening to you you just felt like you know you you were in the thick of it you were in the whirlwind of events just happening to you you felt like your sense of freedom and your sense of free will and your sense of you know being able to exact certain outcomes have been taken away you felt like you're swept along in this um, riptide and um, 
it was almost like um, you 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 were struggling to stay above water. Okay, for many of you, there might have been a lot of financial、uh, obligations, like expenditures or expenses, self-imposed or coming from your external environment, what have you. Where you just felt like, oh, I already pay those bills, but why are there more bills? Okay, and then for others of you, it's like I I already pay that contractor. Why is there more? You know, why are there more hidden fees that I hadn't anticipated? And then for others, this is in a work environment where one thing after another, you feel like you've mastered something, and then something else would like come along to throw a wrench in the works, and then you have to relearn the ropes. And then for others, I feel like you're in an environment where you're very strong and firm, firmly rooted, but your work environment requires more flexibility. Okay, it requires to be, it requires you to be a little bit more versatile, versatile, a little bit more, you know, this is your energy, a little bit more like malleable and bendable, and just you know, allow for. Extenuating circumstances allow for、um, things not going the way exactly that you want, and I feel like this flexibility is is what's coming in for this month. This sense of like I can't really control everything, and I don't want things to be too rigid. I'm just gonna you know go with the tide and not push against the tide because every time you're pushing, I almost feel like you're realizing now that if things are meant to be, it shouldn't be so hard. So when I feel like I'm beating my head against a brick wall, or if I feel like I have to push for a certain outcome, it might not be the right time. So I can push and push and push all I want. I'm not going to get that outcome until the time is right. Or whenever I am pushing so hard for a specific outcome, it means I'm desperately wanting that specific outcome. My blinders are on. I only see that outcome. I only want that outcome. And life is not meant to be that way. You know, you're struggling immensely on a spiritual level, and you finally realize that it's not the way that it's meant to be. So. That's what I'm sensing here. You know that man coming to the water's edge to retrieve some water, walking back to camp, looking at the carnage all around him, looking at the aftermath of a situation, and realizing that you know it didn't have to be like this. But now we're in a space of calmness. We're going to be camped out here. Everyone's going to recover. There might be some casualties along the way, but you know that's collateral damage. But life goes on, right? So. The first card here, we have here the Five of Swords. Okay, the Five of Swords is damage done. We can't really、uh, walk back from this. Okay, so what I'm getting from this card, and normally I, I don't get this, is the sense of like laying down your weapons. It's over. Laying down the swords, letting the walls come down,、uh, no longer fighting, and coming into a sense of like spiritual peace. Okay. Where a situation is really, really easy to get you stuck in a cycle of、um, arguments, a cycle of like、uh, power struggles and pushing back, and like、uh, wanting to. I I I want to say as well like control how things go, control a situation, and I feel like this energy is very much you, Aquarius, because the way you come across, rigidity. Okay. This is like being very, very clear with the laser focus. You know what you want, but in the process, it's almost like I'm willing to cut to get what I want. Okay, and then not making room for,、um, make, not making allowances, not being flexible, not being,、um, not being open to other outcomes, not being open to like an alternative. Way of doing, not being open to like all the other factors that might affect the situation that you're not truly aware of. So I see a situation here where you are divinely guided to kind of like you know break away from this cycle, not let the cycle have its hold on you, and not letting conflict with another person. Um, affect your emotional well-being. Okay, so I, I feel like there's a situation here. It's done and over with, and we are still a little bit anxious. So we're we're clinging onto that sword, and and thinking like, oh, you know, I'm I'm just gonna have this sword sharpened. I'm gonna have the chainmail on. I'm gonna have you know my my gear on just in case. 
but I feel like it's very troublesome and it's very emotionally, it's just not a great place to be, to be on guard all the time, to be like uh, thinking about, you know, just in case, just in case. So there is a situation here that you are definitely, you know, laying to rest and uh, you're realizing that its hold on you was not good for your emotional health and you're letting it go. For some of you, I feel like this is arguments um, with a significant other. This person might not be in a relationship with you anymore, and um, they, you know, there. It's just like the the battle is won at great, 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 great cost. Okay, it's almost like it, it's like you 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 can win it. You can win the battle, but you might not be able to win the war. And so, if you're looking at things in a long-term trajectory, it's like all this struggle and all this fighting and all all of this, you know. Negativity. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't really nurture you or help you grow in a meaningful way, and so you're opting out. Okay, you're just like, okay, I'm putting the swords down. I'm putting the swords down, and I'm just going to be. I'm just going to spend the next, the month of October, healing, taking care of myself, catching up on my chores, catching up on things that I need to do to heal others or to heal heal myself. Um, so that's that goes in I almost feel like so that message ties in with the first image that I saw which is the man by the river okay and in a way the man by the river is actually very much the Aquarian energy okay taking knowledge from this uh, water and pouring it over yourself and sharing it with others and feeling a sense of like calmness coming over you okay this is greatly about healing it's greatly about aspirations and dreams and you know being able to fulfill those uh, things in your life but more so individual healing healing yourself and working on yourself and focusing your energy back on yourself rather than externalizing it and and and, and feeling like things are working against me but taking that energy and just internalizing it and just figure out you know I have control over what I do so I'm going to start focusing on myself okay which is great and this is something that you really really need I just feel like the past four months have been very tiring for many of you I don't know why I feel like there were a lot of ups and downs there were very high highs though and you might have been feeling really happy but I just felt like on a physical emotional level it wasn't very restful and you're kind of like reaching the end of that and you're going into a phase where you're hibernating, you're happy, you're safe, well protected and you're focusing on a lot more on your goals and your dreams and what you need to do for yourself, okay? Uh, this doesn't mean that you know, you're know you like living in a vacuum or living on an island or living in a bubble. It just means there are things that I need to do for myself and I'm gonna focus my energy there. Um, the second image, you know, seeing that, that North Star, it is about your higher calling. It's where you're supposed to go, okay? So through the spread, I see a major um, maturation when it comes to your career, okay? So let me just um, explain a little bit here. Maturation. You start out as a Knight of Wands, okay? This is someone who's very, very ambitious, okay? Uh, someone who's very like, um, it's like wanderlust, okay? Someone who loves to travel, loves to learn about different cultures, loves to explore the world. And um, the fire energies are self-starters, okay? No one guided them. No one told them, you should do this, you should do that. And if anyone knows, the one thing about Aquarius is they, you know, we don't like it when people tell us what to do. In a perverse way, we might do the opposite just to, you know, kind of like put them in their place. Like, who are you to tell me what to do? And so I feel like this is someone who's very much, you know, independent, okay, at a very young age. Independent when it comes to their, their, their opinions, to the things that they do. And also, like, they like to do things and not tell other people. They don't need other people to bounce ideas off of. This is someone who's like a little bit impulsive as well. And I feel like you might have started out, you know, the, the past few months kind of like this. Let me just do that and see what happens. Let me just push that button and see, you know, um, what it affects, okay? 
let me just get involved with that person and see where things go, even though there might be red flags or indicators that they are not the right ones. Um, this thing in the background, okay, this woman, this is like um, your, kind of like your intuition. She's holding a torch. So I feel like there is somebody that could be carrying a torch for you, okay? They've been in, you know, right under your nose this whole time, okay? Carrying a torch, so that basically means someone who really likes you. Someone who, who, the words I'm hearing is, you know, they've got the hots for you or they really, really like you. They're, they're always there. They're always in the background. They're constantly in the landscape and your attention has been diverted elsewhere, okay? You were thinking about greener pastures, you were thinking about greener lands, you were thinking about more like, you know, uh, the next exciting place, the next exciting experience, but this whole time, this person has been in the background. This is also your intuition telling you, and I feel like for some of you, there is a person um, there's a person here that is going to be announcing their announcing their presence. Either they're physically coming to your home, coming in for a visit, and I see like it might be this person here coming to your home. You're inviting them into your inner sanctum. Um, this is someone who might be, you know, darker skin, darker complexion, someone who is considered very classically beautiful or very, very handsome. This is someone who's very financially stable. They have, you know, they have property. They have a very, very well-paying job. They're just, um, they're a good care caretaker. They're a good homemaker as well, okay? So whoever it is, whatever genders you're dating, I feel like this is someone that really meets all of your checklists, meets all of your criteria. Um, the pentacle suit indicates this is someone who's very reserved. Um, and so they don't make these offers very lightly. So they have been looking at you, scanning you, kind of like thinking, turning over in their head constantly. You know, is an Aquarius person like uh, in it to win it? Are they going to, you know, um, full, like take off at the first sign of trouble? Or are they going to be there for me for the long haul? So I feel like there's someone has been really, really thinking about you, wanting to make an offer for longevity. The pentacle suit is about family. It's about unity. It's about sharing resources. It's about trusting the other person enough that you will, you know, share bank accounts. You will join up together as a team, work together as a unit to build something of great value. Okay. So I feel like there's somebody here that is making their presence known. They might be coming to see you. They might be expressing their um, their feelings, their emotions towards you. And I feel like in the past, you know, there might have been a lot of red flags. Either they are seeing the red flags about you or you are seeing the red flags about them. And this is greatly about intuition as well, okay? Uh, guidance, okay? You're looking back in a situation and you're just like, oh, the red flags were there all along. I should have seen it. Um, or this person is, is seeing you as someone who is very exciting, you know, very brave, courageous, exciting, um, moral, ethical as well. Fire is about, you know, that sense of what's right and what's wrong, okay? Um, so someone who's very ethical, they see these things about you, but they also feel like you're going to be here today, gone tomorrow. And so they might not have been, they might have hesitated or have been reticent about making this offer to you. And then we see you maturing, okay? From the Page of Wands to the Knight of Wands. In the Knight of Wands, this is someone who goes out into the world. They wanna help people, they see injustices in the world and they wanna roll up their sleeves and do something about it. This is someone who's very, very courageous, okay? So what's happening here is we see this person on their horse, looking for, you know, damsel in distress, looking for distress signals in other people, wanting to help, wanting to learn from others, wanting to experience, you know, the exotic, okay? And then they're coming across this caravan of people. Um, they look like traders. They look like people who are also very well-traveled. And then it 
seeing these people kind of stops this person in their tracks, okay? So what I'm sensing as well is for many of you, you know, the past few years have been about that armchair approach, okay? When is it going to be my turn? When am I going to go out and explore again? When am I going to see um, broad horizons and meet exotic people and see exotic locales? And then I feel like, you know, just this past few months, this has been happening for you. Travel, movement, meeting people from all walks of life, having a really tremendously amazing time. Okay? So I feel like you're definitely maturing. You have these experiences under your belt. You're learning from other people who are also very like-minded. You're learning about people from different cultures and you're encountering possibly a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life, but also culturally, they are very different from you. It's like a stranger in a, in, in a new land, having being able to explore a new territory. And I feel like many of you have been in a situation where you're dealing with a lot of people, you're learning a lot, you're understanding that, you know, there might be cultural nuances that affects the way in which someone could express their emotions, someone could express, you know, how they feel, someone, it, it's like you're, you're learning a lot from other people about how different upbringings or different cultural practices could affect the coming together of people, can affect misunderstandings, can also uh, enrich an experience, okay? And then what we end up with here is the King of Wands, okay? So this is pretty much a lot of maturation. This is like yearning for the exotic, having experienced it, and then, you know, going back to your lair and just be like, I'm homesick, I need to be home, I need to be, you know, stable, I need to um, settle down, I need a place where I can sit and just take in what I've already learned, set down roots and have other people, you know, that I care about with me. So I feel like you're coming into the realization that, you know, no one exists in a bubble when, or um, the, the experience of bouncing around, it can take its toll on you, it can like um, put barriers and walls around the people that you care about okay so like while you're on on your adventure i feel like whatever whatever life experiences you have gained there are also like great opportunity costs and these opportunity costs might be the um leaving behind uh, relationships or you know not being available for major milestones in uh, people's lives that are really important to you for example seeing um for example like if you have siblings you know seeing them change careers seeing them graduate and not being able to be there okay just because of um you have to travel and then for others it's it's almost like um you're coming back home to visit and then you're not able to like reconnect with your friends because you've been away for so long so you would think that you know things will pick up where they left off but then you know um, the distance has also created like an emotional and also a, a, a spiritual rift between two people, you and, and, and them, and, and things like that, okay? So I definitely feel like there's an element here about things coming back full circle. I've been there, I've done that, and now I want a place to call home. So there's a sense of nostalgia for... I'm getting an anxiousness when it comes to having to pick up and travel again and not knowing what the de next destination is going to be. There's excitement, but there's also a lot of trepidation. And so I feel like you're in a space where you do want to settle down, okay? You're definitely a lot more selective. You're a lot more selective. Like, these are the things I'm willing to do, and these are the things that I don't want. So you're, you're, you're at your uh, peak when it comes to your ability to bargain for the things that you want. Okay, so I feel like that maturation process is all about, it is all about having to, ha to go through these experiences, okay, the myriad of experiences so that you, you know its effect on you and you know its effect on the people around you. And after you've gone through all those experiences, for you to come back to a place of safety and to figure out that, you know what, uh, the travel bug is gone. I don't need that anymore. I'm ready and prepared and, and I'm at a really good place now professionally where I can settle down. So I feel like the travel, the new, the new experiences might have been stepping stone 
um, you know, it's like a career booster, either for your resume or either for your current job. Whatever it was, it helped you get to this place where you're very, very stable in your professional life so that you can figure out what do I want to do from now, okay? Um, with this energy, this is someone who is in a position of power, okay? They're either guiding others, they're training others, or they are managing other people. For some of you, you might be dealing with somebody like this, okay? So uh, for, for some of you, this could be like a romantic partner. They're kind of like in the top of their profession. They have a lot to offer, but they also have a lot to lose, okay? And I almost sense like there is a, um, a situation here where this person might feel that you're unpredictable. They want safety and comfort and they want to settle uh, down and they want to, you know, firmly plant those roots and, and be sedentary for a little while. They see you as somebody who might be, you know, who's definitely their equal match. Very intelligent. They love to talk to you, to pick your brains. They like the intellectual uh, rapport. They like the debate. They're looking at you. You're looking at them. And it's like no one is willing to show their cards. No one is willing to, you know, make that first move like, this is how I feel, and then the other person would reciprocate. I feel like the feelings are there. There's great chemistry and great passion, but I feel like it's kind of like at a, an impasse or a stalemate, mainly because both parties might want different things. This person, I feel, is more willing to settle down, whereas this person is still like, I'm not really sure. I, I, I still need a little bit of bouncing around. So you might be dealing with someone who might want that, you know the whole nine yards like the the house the the white picket fence the the kids and the family but they're they're seeing you as a relationship potential but there are things about you that that screams out that you're too independent and i feel like it might not that is a turn off to them they, they like your sense of independence they wouldn't change a thing about you but i also feel like you're so unorthodox and in their eyes, you're so unpredictable that they don't know how to approach you. And I also feel like they, they, they feel like you say whatever's on your mind, you don't really care. And they might not feel like you're diplomatic enough when it comes to your words. So I'm not going to tell you, Aquarius, to change anything that you do, okay? Because you are special and unique in your own way. But I feel like this person is looking for someone who's a little bit more censored, okay? So... That's not to say you should change anything about yourself, okay? But I just feel like that's what's coming in from the other person. Um, the last image that I'm seeing here is, uh, you know, the, the, the wolf in sheep's clothing, okay? There's somebody in your life, and um, I'm not able to pick, pick up the signs here, okay? So I feel like you're dealing with potentially a lot of signs. Um, I don't feel like it's a bad person, okay? I, I don't feel it's a bad person, but I feel like it's somebody who might be like a social chameleon, okay? They fit in in with whoever they're with, okay? So, for example, if um, they're with a group of people who love bowling, even though they don't like bowling, they'll say like, oh, I love to bowl. And then they're with a, like, they, they, they're just very amorphous, okay? So they will kind of like take the shape of whatever container they're in. So it's someone who's a little bit of a social chameleon. And I also feel this is someone who puts a lot of emphasis on wealth and prestige. And uh, one of the ways in which they try to impress you is, hey, look at all this money I've got. Look at this cool job I've got. Look at my new car. And Aquarius, we know that we don't really care about any of those things, right? And so this person's approach towards you is they're, they're doing the wrong things to impress you. I feel like there's definitely somebody coming to visit. They want to impress. They're smitten by you. And then I also feel like they're, they're giving you, for example, if you're an Aquarius female, they're giving you what they think stereotypically women want. If you're an Aquarius male, this and, and if you're an Aquarius male, this person is coming in and they're giving you the whole spiel of what they think a stereotypical male would want. So I'm, I'm sensing here, this is someone who is not very spiritually evolved and they're not a bad person. 
I feel like they definitely carry a torch for you. They really care about you. They like you and they want that longevity with you. Keep in mind, this is for the month of October. So this might be somebody new that you're meeting. Um, there is definitely cultural differences, okay? It, I'm seeing like a lot of interracial dating and I see that a lot with the fire signs. Um, fire expands, okay? And it, it's, um, and I'm sensing a very strong like Sagittarian vibe here. So I feel like you're dealing with someone who's different from you, either racially, ethnically, or linguistically, but like they're trying to impress. They're, they're putting on airs. I don't feel like they're lying about their resources. I just feel like they're hyping all these things that you don't think to be very important. And in a way, you might feel like they're a little bit shallow, okay? There is definitely depth to this person. So give it a little bit more time. Be a little bit more patient with this person because you're going to realize that what it, it it's not all what it seems, okay? So the, the wolf in sheep's clothing analogy is not like to say, you know, beware. It's to say like... At first, this person might seem a little bit superficial because they keep talking about how much money they make and things like that and you don't really care. Um, but I feel like there's some... There's more underneath that is worth exploring, I feel. And there's more underneath that can be... That, that's, there's like more depth, more substance once they feel comfortable around you, okay? So I feel like it's a union that can work out really well. Uh, we're talking a lot about, you know, taking a little bit of a, a, a rest, assessing a situation, but also, you know, if you've been dealing with a lot of conflict and what I have here, five of swords, the end of a conflict, seven of uh, wands, um, this is like a lot of things coming at you and you kind of have to fend for yourself, okay? not in a spirit of aggression because I feel like, you know, the conflict is over. And so it is really important to kind of like internalize that, okay? Um, a lot of the times too, when we are put in constantly like tenuous or stressful situation, our body, you know, produces chemicals when it comes to the that flight or fight response. So we're constantly like, um, inundating our bodies with a lot of adrenaline and so it's not a good state to be we might not make rational decisions we might feel like there might be like a, a imagined slight okay and so it's really important for you to realize hey it, it's done it's over with i need to put my wands down i need to like you know let them come towards me and present their case and i need to break away from this pattern where i'm constantly you know feeling attacked or I'm constantly feeling like that adrenaline rush, that, that fight or flight response and operating from a space where I'm not making, you know, the best optimal decisions for myself. And so the advice here for you guys is definitely the four of swords. Okay. This is sort of like turning off your brain, turning off your mind, um, just living in the moment and not really think about things or not really, you know, projecting onto things or, or, or like constantly overthink things, okay? It is what it is. Take everything that you see for the month of October, take it at face value with a grain of salt, okay? Take it at face value because I feel like whatever needs to be unearthed, you know, like that uh, wolf in sheep's clothing imagery, um, it's not going to fool you, okay? So I feel like many of you need to really focus on, you know, taking better care of yourself, getting enough sleep, getting enough rest, and being in a situation, especially where you're not going to feel constantly like um, embattled or embroiled in a battle, okay? Um, let me see if there's anything else that is coming through. I feel like career is going really, really well. There might be uh, speaking engagements for some of you. There might be travel opportunities for others of you. Uh, traveling to meet someone um, I'm seeing this caravan so like it could be like uh, traders or people who are like business associates okay this is people who might be interested in trading you trading for something or like a barter bargain trading is what I'm sensing so you might be in that type of um, um, wholesale or like doing some type of merchandising exchange with another person and you're going to potentially show them what you have and then for others of you I feel like 
there might have been a lot of like disruptions and changes in the work environment. Changing of the guards is what I'm sensing. Okay, changing roles, changing of the guard, changing expectations, or like having to wear many many hats, having to be、uh, flexible. One day you do it like this, the next day you have to do it like that, and that could like take its toll on you because as much as you like change and excitement, you still a fixed sign, and you have like、um, a process in which you conduct your workflow right, so that things,、um, so that you don't forget things. So you have like a, a procedure, and you follow that procedure. So if somebody changes things up on you at the very last minute, it can be very disruptive. Okay, you like to be the one that implements change, but when change is happening, and especially if it happens in a、um, Constant way or in in a very nonsensical way, I don't feel like you welcome the change, and I feel like this is the month where you just kind of have to, I guess, like adapt the new way of doing, not question it, and kind of roll with the punches, be a lot more flexible and lenient and things like that. Career is going really, really well. Many of you are feeling like you are a very vital. It's like、um, the whole reading I'm sensing. Money comes in, in, in you know, in droves. Okay, so so financially you're in a good space, but the readings, all the cards kind of converge upon this card, and this is the card about hope, inspiration,、um, being a star, being very visible to other people, your conduct, your performance, your teaching, even. The way in which you carry yourself, the way in which you conduct your business, is being highly publicized in a very good way. Okay, so for many of you, you might have felt like, oh, this is where I'm meant to be. This is the right work environment for me, or this is the job that I'm meant to, you know, the the role that I'm meant to occupy. You're feeling like I don't have to bounce around anymore. I'm very comfortable. I can sit down. I can lay down roots because this is where I'm meant to be. Okay, so that's really, really good. I I definitely feel the whole imagery about somebody carrying a torch for you here. This message keeps coming back. It keeps coming back through these two cards.、Um, take a moment, okay? Like I said, don't jump right in. This person wants to impress, and so they're gonna say things to impress. And I feel like you need to dig a little bit deeper. There is a different person underneath. There's a different person underneath. And it doesn't mean that it's not going to work out. It just feels to me like there's more that meets the eye, and you you have to do your own little you know dissection or little、uh, research before you get involved with this. Okay, especially if it's a new person that you've never dated before. You might have known, but you might not have dated before.、Um, I keep seeing somebody come into your house, and I'm also seeing like obedience training.、Um, I'm I'm seeing that this is somebody that is very very. You're dealing with someone who might be a little bit insecure. They might need a lot of like.、Um, they 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 might need a lot of、uh, affirmation from you. They might need like a lot of confirmation. They might open up only if you tell them how you feel because they've got a lot of pride. Okay, they've got a lot to lose. They don't want to get their egos pricked. Okay, kings are a lot more about egos. And so queens, I feel like you know they're they're in that buffer position where they make decisions too. They do things and get a lot of things started, and they also garner a lot of respect. But they're not in that driver's seat where you know if they mess up, all the blame is on them. Okay, so I feel like there's a person here where they have a lot riding on the situation, and so they're waiting for you to put down that sword. I I see as well as、um, some of you. You're dealing with somebody that you feel might be dragging their feet, and normally they're not somebody who drags their feet. But for whatever reason, when you're dealing with them, it can be a little bit frustrating because they're very, very slow to act. They're very methodical. They like to assess the situation fully, so they haven't really formed an opinion yet. And so let them form that opinion,、um, so that you don't push them. You know. So, so that you don't push them towards a specific outcome, or you don't push them into a corner, or back them into a corner, and I feel like. They need to do it on their own time. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that, Aquarius. I feel like this is a month where being flexible, being easygoing, and especially you know, don't get yourself riled up over things that you cannot change or things that are outside of your control. So realizing, sitting with yourself, and figuring out that you know,、um, do I have control in this situation? What can I do to make the situation better? 
okay rather than trying to fight against the tide okay so that that's what i'm sensing might be very beneficial for this month i hope the reading is helpful i hope it resonates with you and i hope that you are well prepared for the month of october it's not going to be you know like a walk in the park i feel like there might be pockets of irritations here and there but you have your center of gravity you're very grounded you're very grounded you're working from a space of inner knowing inner knowledge okay and that's where it permeates so like it's not about you know assessing your environment this is more about focusing on yourself figuring out things that you need to to do and then going from there okay um i wish you all the best and uh, Aquarius, I'm no longer offering um, private readings. So if you're interested in a reading, I have a colleague of mine. Her name is Bridget. I've included the link to her scheduling website in the description box below. And so if you're interested in booking a reading with her, she is phenomenal. A lot of my regular clients have been shifting over that way. And um, they've, they've said amazing things. I've gotten like pretty good feedback. So if you're looking for a reading, I highly recommend her. Okay, take care of yourself and I will be back next month. I'm aiming to do one uh, round of reading per month so that I don't get burned out and I can juggle, you know, successfully my full-time job with this job. I'm also in a new location, so I need to um, kind of figure things out. All right, take care and I will talk to you guys soon. And uh, I wish you the very, very best for the rest of September and a wonderful new start for the month of October 2019. Bye-bye.